Today we're gonna visualize magnetic fields with a Quest 3. So how are we gonna do that? Okay, so basically the idea is to take the magnetometers from cell phones and send that information through a web socket into the goggles that we can see the magnetic fields and hopefully we can visualize some interesting things. I've always wanted to be able to see magnetic fields um, and it's something that like they are a lot more complicated than people seem to think. So that's, that's what we're gonna be doing today. <laughs> This is my first video with a Quest, and so I just really wanted to highlight the fact that the screen recordings are significantly higher quality than like what you actually see. So when you're looking through it, it looks a lot more like scuba diving duck goggles. So we have a cell phone and we have a Quest 3, and the idea is to connect the two reference frames. So the majority of the difficulty in this project isn't actually measuring the magnetic fields or anything like that. It's getting an object from one reference frame to another um, and updating those in real time. So, because we have to, like, as me measurements come in, we want to be able to add those to the Quest 3 visor display. So, um, just kind of keeping track of the location and stuff. So, in order to get the transfer of the coordinate spaces, we need to do some image tracking. Uh, one of the unfortunate parts is that Zoom. the WebXR image tracking doesn't have autofocus, which means in order to get it to work, <laughs> we need to use a blurry image. So, this is the image that we're using. Zoom. Yes, this this is a deodorant stick. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we need to use an out-of-focus image to track. Um, so that ends up causing a lot of other issues further down the line because if blurry images don't track well, um, and so you have a lot of like these images flying off into space and stuff, this is more of a proof of concept. Okay, so from the image tracking, we now have a way of transforming between these two reference frames, and we also have the magnetic fields that we're ca capturing from a web API, so that actually is available to us. And then we can just send that all through, and then we can plot it all out in the Quest 3. And so the red box that we see flowing around, that is the self-reported position and location of the cell phone. So we're not doing any image tracking on the Quest 3. That is information that the, the cell phone has actually provided to us. Yeah, uh, and it, it's we can start exploring some of the different magnetic fields that are interesting. Bar magnets or simple magnets are really interesting because they give a good baseline to make sure that everything we are working on is working correctly. <laughs> In this case, all of the magnetic field lines travel from the north to the the south pole um and we have this kind of like it's like a, gonna be a spherical cylindrical type shape where we have all these magnetic fields traveling around the magnet yeah we can see that it's like working how it should be working <laughs> another shape that's really common is the horseshoe magnet and that's where you kind of have this horseshoe like shape um and in the middle you have the strongest magnetic fields because it's just traveling straight across and then around that you kind of have these like uh like you can see these really large arches and stuff uh so we can look for that and yeah it seems to be all working how it should be working one thing that is pretty fun to explore is when you have a magnet and you have some sort of metal thing, if you put the magnet on the metal thing, it turns the metal thing into a magnet. So uh, you end up with this like bigger magnet. Um, and sometimes the magnetic fields coming off of these weirder shapes uh, aren't as predictable. They like So it's it's fun to just kind of explore around. One thing I have noticed is that the way I'm plotting it right now um, isn't particularly, it's very hard to see what's happening. So I need to think about other ways of doing that. Normally you would do this with field line, the grid, but it's actually a pretty common complicated problem and yeah like, I, th I think you need to use some sort of like voxeling method to voxel the magnetic I I'm not sure I, I have to look into that a little bit more and think about how I might want to do that but um yeah it it's an interesting project <laughs> So I wanted to gloss over the code aspect. Um, it's actually not too complicated. So you have two different WebXR apps. Um, the first one is the mobile app, and that's the one that records the magnetic field. And then it has an open WebSocket, uh, which it feeds across the information. Uh, it also does the image tracking. And so that's how we're able to connect the two reference frames. Uh, so it tracks the image that is on the Quest. Um, and then it sends that over through the WebSocket to the Quest so that it knows where it is relative to the camera. Um, and then the other thing is, yeah, just sending those measurements across with the corrections. So because they, you're moving your cell phone around, um, it's changing its position and its like angle and stuff. So you have to update, you have to fix those by applying some quaternions and stuff. But it's actually not too bad. Um, the main thing I had difficulty with was finding the exact uh, coordinate transformation uh, because that ends up being a little bit tricky. And then on the other side of it, on the quest, that's basically just taking all of the information in and then plotting it out. So it's it's a very simple app. Um, um, the cell phone one is actually the more complicated aspect. There's more things going around. Um, and that also is one of the problems with like, if your cell phone isn't fast enough, it's going to cause a lot of dragging issues and stuff because uh, just, it causes a lot of problems. 
problems. So live coding and pass through, like this is something that Eddie, everyone should try at some point. It's just, it's weird because you're like, I want this box to move over using code. And then you just like, it moves. It, like, it, it's not very high quality right now, but it's still crazy. Like it's, oh. <laughs> So a lot of this contained ideas from a few of the previous projects that I had been working on. So in particular, the um, synchronized reality or the shared realities, particularly the shared realities and the magnetic field project were two things that were very helpful in developing this as well. Um, so those are things that to just see the history of how this came about. It'd be interesting to try this with some of the other APIs, but that's all I have for today. So thanks and have a great day.